Okay, so if A is 25% of B, then 135% of B is what percent of A? Okay, so A equals 0.25 of B, right? What's yeah. the rest of the question? And then 135% of B is what percent of A? Okay. Well, what's B equal to here in terms of A? If I solve this first equation, I get B... Is it equals 4a, and now if I take 135% of b, I can take 1.35 times both sides of the equation, so 135% of b is that, and they want to know what percentage is it of a. So 135% of B is equal, it's four times that, uh, 5.2A. 135% of B is equal to 520% of A. Hold it. That's uh, 540. 5.4. Yeah, I just realized I had done my math wrong. But that's the way that most problems that you have difficulty solving, the best way to do it is just to start writing equations and then manipulating them a little bit. In other words, solving for B, and then multiply both sides by that, and you get 135% of B is equal to 5.4 times A, which translates to 540% of A. All right. Is that the only one you had that you can remember that? Uh, that's the only one. Yeah, it's the only one on this in this packet. Okay. Let me see what I got here. Let's. I kind of like the idea of going through this geometry, and I'm still going to skip the geometries that um, I don't think you run into. Um, I, that might be a mistake. I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't skip them. Uh, I, let's see. Uh, on the first test, number 53, we got two. In other words, since I haven't taken... <laughs> The, a real ACT in a long time, I don't know if problems like 23 are on the test. It's just I've never seen geometry problems like this on any other practice tests. Yeah, but, on our practice test, there was nothing like that either. Really? These properties of circles? Yeah. Most important property. Yeah, there's... Let's just do one of them, okay, just to make sure that we we cover our bases. And once you do one of them, that's all we need to do. There's one very important consideration. There's actually two. When your diameter or radius line intersects a chord, any chord, it bisects it and meets it at a right angle. Okay? Right. So this is equal to that. But the key to doing all of these problems is to know that that radius line is the same as that radius line. Okay, so let's figure out what's going on here. CD is 8, that means that side is 4 and that side is 4. 
OE is 3. What is the length of the radius of the circle? Five. Correct. And notice we had to draw those in. They weren't in there. So this is what our picture would have looked like. You just really only have to draw one of them. That's the radius. But a lot of times you do need to draw both of them. And remember that all radiuses are the same. That's a key consideration when you're doing any ACT problem, is that all radiuses are the same. In, within the same circle. <laughs> and I think we talked about this, right? What's the relationship between this angle C and this angle O? Isn't it, isn't O two times as big as C. Correct, because it comes out of the center and C comes off of the circumference. As long as that's the case. In other words, both of these angles subtend the same arc. They both subtend arc AB. And so this angle is the same as that arc measurement, but this angle down there is one half of that arc measurement. Yeah. All right, let's go up here to the right. Oh, man, the quality on these, I apologize for. Let me blow it up a little bit. Might be able to see it a little easier. Yeah, that helps. This was, after all, a cut and paste job from a, a, Ex-student's mother. Can you read all of that? Yeah. Okay, what's the answer? This one would probably, this probably I would expect to see this on the ACT. What's angle AOC? Um, AOC is 40. Okay. So one, 140. Okay. Key thing is knowing that angle is the same as that arc measurement, which is not to say the same as arc length. Arc length and arc measurement are two different things. One is in degrees, the other is in inches or centimeters, something like that. Okay, let's do this one. That angle is 100 degrees. That's angle BAC. Yeah. What's the measurement of this arc BC? Isn't it 200? Correct. So if this is an isosceles figure, in other words, AB equals AC, which they tell us it is, then what's the measurement of AB? Mm, half of what? It be half of one six. Which is 160. 80, which is so, 80. Yeah. But notice that if I connect this dot to that line, that is an obtuse angle. So yeah. it is not drawn to scale. Or we made a mistake. Ah. Well, first of all, they tell us that angle BAC is 100 degrees. Look at it. It's a lot less than 90. So yeah. the, the drawing is definitely not to scale. And that's not supposed to be the case with the ACT. That was always the case with the SAT, but they always put a little sentence under it saying, figure not drawn to scale. And when it says, figure not drawn to scale, be careful about visualizing the answer. Because notice that when I tried visualizing this answer for the arc, 
length of AB, it came out to be 80, which didn't fit the picture. The picture has that arc length, not arc length, but the measurement of that arc as being about 100, maybe 120. It's about a third of a circle, right? And yeah. I would say that each of those is a third. A third, a third, a third, which would make that 120. Uh, but it all stems from the fact that that angle is clearly not 100 degrees. Okay. Now, this is one that I don't believe. Remember the geometry that said if you have two intersecting chords that AE times EB is equal to CE times E whatever the other end of it is. Yeah. So that's the principle that needs to be applied in this problem. Um, it's relatively easy. CE is X. ED is 6X. So we have X times 6X is equal to 6 times 4. So we have 6X squared equals 24. X squared equals 4. X equals 2. Okay. But once again, I don't ever remember seeing another geometry problem on the ACT that's like that. Good, a little bit clear cut and paste job. All right, 50. Tell me conceptually how we're going to do 50. the area of the shaded um, ring going to be equal to? What's the it would be, I do the um, area of the square minus the area of the circle and then minus the area of the two other parts. Well, do we know how to figure out the area of that part? No. Okay. So what do we have to say then? The area of the shaded region is not the area of the square minus the area of the circle. It's half of that. In other words, this area right here is the same as this area up here, those combined areas. Each of these are the same. So this formula that you gave me gives me the area of all four regions, that, 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 and that. And we're only looking at two of them, so we're going to take that and divide it by two. Uh, now, what's the area of the square? 36. And the area of the circle? Um, um, Nine pi. That's definitely on the test. If there are two formulas that you want to know instantly, it's the area of a circle and the circumference of a circle. Okay. Isn't area 2 pi r? Area is pi oh, no. r squared. Yeah, pi r squared. Circumference is 2 pi r. Okay. okay. How do I remember it? How do I differentiate between the two? Area is pi r squared. Pi r squared, they're circle, circular. So I always remember that. It's a contradiction of what I know to be true. Pi's are circular in shape, not squared in shape. So that helps me to remember area is pi r squared. And in circumference is the same three characters only the two goes in front. It's like taking the first derivative. 
If you had, you haven't had any calculus at all, right? You've had a little bit, maybe. Yeah, we're starting it, but it, we're mostly doing like parabolas and crap. Okay. Well, once you learn the power rule, to take a derivative, you take the exponent, multiply it by those two, and subtract one from it. So if you took the derivative of pi r squared, you'd get 2 pi r. And incidentally, that same relationship holds between the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and the surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. Notice the surface area is the first derivative of the volume. And I don't think that's accidental. I'm not 100% sure. But, but anyway, these two formulas, you want to know them like you know your name. Right. So, back to the problem. That's the area of the square. That's the area of the circle. I've got to divide it by 2. What's my answer? Would it just be just what you have to know? You just leave that. So split it, it up. Be split it F. up into two fractions. Yeah, then you got that fraction, which is 18, and you have that fraction, which is minus 9 pi over 2. Always know you can split up fractions. Let's just go over that for a moment because A plus B over C is equal to A over C plus B over C. What you cannot do is this. You cannot split that up. That is not equal to A over B plus A over C. Wait. See the difference? In the top, there's only one term in the denominator. Yeah. The bottom, there's two terms. The moment you have more than one term, you know, and it's being added or subtracted, you cannot split it up into fractions. I, su right. I suppose if I had a Z, then I could kind of split it up. I could say that that's equal to A plus Z. No, excuse me. Uh, I could say it's equal to A over B plus C plus Z over B plus C. So I can sometimes split it up, but I always have to leave the denominator the same if I do. All right. Uh, another intersecting chord problem. Just remember that times that is equal to that times that. Let's go to 34. Hold, hold on. The distance from the center of a circle to a chord is 5. If the length of the chord is 24, it means that's 12 and that's 12. What's the radius? 13. Good. It's definitely one of the, the two Pythagorean triangles that you definitely want to recognize are 3, 4, 5 and 5, 12, 13 because they appear so much on the test. And I, I don't think anything bigger than that. You don't need to worry about the next one up, which I think is 8, 15. 7, 24. I think oh, yeah. there's an 8, 8, 15, 17. Yeah, 8, 15, there's 17 is the next one. Good. You clearly remember them. Okay, another intersecting chord. This is 
is a problem you should never miss. Start with the general. It's two pi r. Always start with the general. That always leads you to the next step. They're asking about yeah. circumference, so we need to know the radius. So radius is four. In other words, on circle questions like that, if you know the radius, you know the other two variables, area and circumference. But if you know area, that allows you to figure out the radius, and then you can figure out circumference. So you only need one of the three variables to solve for all three. If you have area, circumference, or radius, you can solve for the other two. Yeah. This problem here is pretty common. The area of a circle, what is inscribed to mean? Inside a square. Okay. And the diagonal of the square is eight. <laughs> And they want the area of the circle, meaning we're going to need the distance from there to there as a radius. Well, I don't see any way of getting it from that, but what can I do? Isn't the diagonal of a wait, the diagonal of a square isn't the same as the uh, just straight up and down, right? Wait, no. Remember that thing you said, all radiuses are equal. So this radius between the two dots is the same as that radius right there. Yeah. So if we can figure out the dimensions of the square, we'll know half of that side length is the radius of the circle. Yeah. Here's the triangle. What kind of oh. triangle is that? It's the 45-45. Okay. Let's look at the unit, 45-45. What are my dimensions? Isn't it X? Um, each 45 side is X and X, and then the other one's 2X. That's why I don't so like putting, that's why I don't like using the X. The reason I okay. don't is it gives you too much to remember. If you call this the unit, kind of like a unit circle and trig, that's my unit 45 45 right triangle. It has the dimensions 1 1 square root of 2. So to figure out what this side of this bigger triangle is, what do I do? There's always one first step. What's the similarity ratio? In other words, find the two corresponding um, sides and divide the bigger one by the smaller one. Always big over little. So it would be 8 over 2. Okay. And then you take that and multiply it by this side here to get that side there. Because the ratios are always the same. So that multiplied by 1 is also this. Now, do I need to rationalize it? Yeah. Actually, I don't. Notice that that is this measurement, 8 over root 2. 
Well, they want the area of the circle, which is pi r squared. Right? Yeah. So this is one case where don't rationalize until you get to the end of a problem. You may not need to. When I square 8 over root 2, what is it? Uh, wouldn't it be 4? No. Square the numerator no. and then square the denominator. So 64 over 2 is 32. 32 pi is the area of that circle. And I never had to rationalize the denominator, which saved me a step. Because after I rationalize it, it's even going to be harder to square. You're going to have a more complicated numerator. Okay? So that's kind of the rule of thumb I use is never rationalize until you get to the end. Because you might not have to. Can we stop here because my Wi-Fi is going freaking out and sure. it won't, like I can barely hear you. Oh, sure. Most of the time. So we'll just do a half hour today. Uh, okay. Yeah. Talk to you next Wednesday at 4. All right. All Sorry right. about that. No problem. All right. Bye-bye.